my kids are supposed to be napping, but they're not. So my very kind husband is sitting in their room with them, but we live in a 1400 square foot house, so you will probably hear them at some point in this video. How do I start this video? Am I like, oh my God, hi, did you hear the good news? Or am I like, oh my God, hi, did you hear the news? <sighs> well, if you haven't heard the news, we are expecting our third baby. And it was a complete surprise. A little disclaimer before we get started on this video. If you are trying to conceive or walking through infertility, this may not be the video for you to watch. We have had really good friends walk through both of those seasons and we know secondhand how painful they are and how hard it can be when you hear about other people's pregnancies. We are in no way trying to make a video that is hurtful or painful, but we are trying to make a video that's just real about what it feels like to have a surprise or unplanned pregnancy, especially so soon after having another kid. So we ask that if you're in a really tender place, maybe you skip this video or at least try to understand where we're coming at also, knowing that our intention is not to be hurtful but that this just might not be the video for you and it might be a painful video to watch. If you don't know my family, I have been married for four and a half years to a man named Bryson, great guy, superior human being. And we have two tiny humans. We have a two and a half year old named Zeke and a nine month old named Valley. We intentionally had them really close together because we wanted to be two and done uh, we wanted to live the diaper years, the daycare years, the sleepless years, all in one section of time and move on from that hardship with our lives. So we were good when both of our kids showed up. Well, when Valley was five months, we found out that lo and behold, despite all of our preventative measures, we were pregnant with baby number three. And we were angry. When we took a pregnancy test, um, because my period had not come that month, we were so sad. I laid on my kitchen floor and I cried and cried and cried. And Bryson didn't say another word for the whole day. I mean, we were so angry and so overwhelmed. And it sounds dramatic because children are a blessing for sure. But a few main things really went through our mind. Oh, excuse me. A few main things really went through our mind when we found out. First is that we really hadn't just, we really had just gotten out of the newborn stage. I mean, Valley was still sleeping in our room. And while she had just started sleeping through the night, she was making a whole lot of noise. You know how it is when they're at that five month age, they cry in their sleep. They're tossing, they're turning, they're moving. How a human can sleep through that much movement, I don't know. So we weren't really sleeping. She had just gotten to the place where she was sleeping. Um, and we had just finished our journey with breastfeeding her. I had gone exclusively pumping with her around one month. And around four months, I had just decided that the cost benefit was not worth the toll it was taking on my family and my life to be pumping exclusively full time. So we had, I had been able to save up enough breast milk to transition off of pumping and still give her breast milk until she was six months. And then we just moved fully to formula. We had been supplementing the whole time. So we really had just started to feel a little sense of normalcy when we found out that surprise in nine months, we're getting another one. Second, our budget was and is barely accommodating two children. We have two in daycare, in the city, that's about two grand a month um, on top of our mortgage and other bills that we pay. And I don't and did not know how we were gonna accommodate a third kid. We are already pretty strict with our budget. We don't go buy new clothes. We don't buy new things. We don't go shopping. We do have a habit of eating out probably once a week. And then Bryson and I always have a Monday morning coffee date at our favorite coffee shop. But for the most part, we've really, we have a really reined in budget. And we were already not making it to make our goals, like our saving goals and stuff like that. 
So the idea of bringing a third into this picture sounded daunting. And third, pregnancy is awful for me. I mean like running to the bathroom to puke in the middle of the night well into the second and third trimester. Kind of awful for me. I also struggle pretty bad with restless leg syndrome and heartburn. I'm just one of those miserable pregnant women. Um, so yeah, all of these things were going through our head as we are finding out that we're gonna have a third kid. Boof. I am now about 20 weeks pregnant. When this video comes out, I should be 20 weeks pregnant. And we've just gotten to the place recently where we feel okay about having another child. Um, there's still a lot of unknowns, but it's taken a, about 15 weeks for us to come around to the idea. So we were really angry and really sad for a long time. And there's still a ton of unknown and a lot of tension. We are just realizing now that there's nothing we could or honestly would do about it and that God's gonna figure it out. But some of the areas that we're still just trying to navigate and figure out are definitely our budget. I don't know how we're gonna accommodate three kids in daycare. Bryson nor I make enough money for one of us to quit our jobs. I actually changed careers mid maternity leave with Valley. And while I am so much happier in my job, I make a decent amount less than I did before. So, um, we neither of us can just really afford to stay home and honestly neither of us want to because we both love our jobs so much we work for the church we love our jobs and our co-workers and we just love the mission that we feel like we're called to so we have to figure something out budget wise we either have to somebody might have to change jobs somebody might miraculously just decide they want to both work part-time and be a stay-at-home parent or we have to figure out some extra type of income Second, we only have one car. The same week that we found out that we were pregnant, Bryson's car bit the dust, which wouldn't have done us much good anyways because it was a five-seater car, just like what we have now. But we just weren't ready for it to bite the dust and we got very little money for it when we finally sold it for parts. Um, so currently we are a one-car family in my Subaru Crosstrek which we have tried, which we tried really hard to pay off and did successfully, but we don't know if we can fit three car seats in it. It's currently in the shop getting a little facelift from some collision damage. And when we get her back, we're going to try to shove a third car seat in there and see if it's even possible. So if we can't fit three car seats in the back of my Subaru Crosstrek, then we're going to have to get a second car, a new car, a different car, but our budget, see the point right before this one, cannot accommodate a car payment at all. Our three baby budget doesn't even allow us to save money. We can tithe and that's about it, Out, like outside of you know, food and diapers and stuff like that. So um, we've got to figure out a car situation. Both of those things, both our budget and our car are super unknown. I will let you know as soon as we know what's happening. But as of right now, it's a mystery. Third is just like a lot of really selfish stuff that we're feeling, even though we're feeling better. There's just a lot of tension around selfish things. For one, just in full transparency, I, I still had some weight to lose from Valley and we were getting into this great routine where we were waking up at 5 a.m. and we were working out on the Peloton app and really just enjoying that. Strength training again, all that good stuff. And then when I got pregnant and got super sick, working out just goes out the window when I'm pregnant. I'm too sick to do it. It makes me feel worse. I'm just not going to work out. And so it was just really discouraging to know that I was going to gain more weight. I'm heavier than I've ever been and I'm just going to continue to get heavier. And so I know that we live in this wonderful culture where everyone's like, you've grown a baby, don't worry about your weight, blah, blah, blah. But we all have that ideal weight that just makes us feel the best that we can feel. And so that's been really discouraging on the selfish side of things. And also my abs never went back after Valley. Like I was still working on putting them back together. And so I feel like I started showing 
12, 13 weeks into this third pregnancy. And that was also discouraging because I had pulled out all of my pre-maternity clothes and I was so excited to wear them again. And then I had to pack them all back up and put them all away and it was so sad to me. I also don't know what formula feeding or breastfeeding is gonna look like. It's been a struggle to breastfeed both of my kids. They have both had breast milk until they were six months. I don't know what we will do with this third one just because the cost benefit based on the time it takes, the stress it puts on our family, it just might not be worth it. So we have built it into our three baby budget to formula feed, but we're trying not to make any huge decisions until that comes along, or until the baby comes along. I think one of the selfish things for Bryson is that he feels like, man, I miss my best friend, I miss my wife, <clears throat> and I want my best friend back. And another baby is just going to drive us further apart. Because when you have two kids, especially when you have a toddler and a newborn, you're really divided, right? Bryson's trying to conquer the toddler while I'm taking care of the newborn. And it leaves you feeling disconnected. And we try really hard. Luckily, we ride to work together, work in the same place. That really helps. But <clears throat> while we still try really hard to be connected, nothing compares to just when you don't have kids and it's just the two of you. So I think for him, he's really struggling with this idea of not really having his wife back for another two years. Because that's really how long it feels like it takes to regain a sense of normalcy with each impending kid. So those are just some of the unknowns that we're walking through and we really just don't know the answers to any of those. We do believe that God is going to come through, mainly because if he doesn't, we don't eat. That's just how we feel. That's how it seems. The only thing left to go that is flexible that we can afford to cut is our grocery bill and it's already pretty low. So God's got to figure it out and he doesn't have a choice and we believe he will. And luckily he's already started showing us that he's gonna take care of us. For example, our church took care of our medical bill to have this baby. So when I was with the government, I paid a grand to have each kid. Well, because I'm with the church now, it's like four grand to have a C-section. And because they know it's a planned C-section, most practices will take that money up front. So we got hit with a four grand bill within the first couple of weeks of finding out. And we didn't know how we were gonna make that either. That's a huge chunk of our savings. So our church stepped in through their care program and they covered it. At the same time, our community within our church rallied around and raised money for us when they found out about Bryson's car. So we've been really lucky to have such good community that cares about us and that sees us and has stepped in for this surprise pregnancy and is trying to help. And we just can't thank God enough for that. So he hasn't answered everything. He hasn't answered most of it. He has not dumped the solution into our lap, but he is providing us with little answers along the way. So that's been really good and really nice to see. Um, it helps us feel a lot less alone and a lot less scared. Although we're still like a little bit scared. So that's kind of where we're at and what we think the future is going to look like and just how we've processed having a surprise baby. Um, I think I will probably open my YouTube channel back up and just feature videos on what it's like to be two full-time working parents and still trying to eat and make it with two kids and one on the way. So I would really ask please that you subscribe or like. It would be great if YouTube could become that source of a little bit of extra income for us. Um, so yeah, if you want to, that would be awesome. You should jump in with us because eventually the budget, the car, the baby, it's all going to shake out. And don't you want to know how it ends? I want to know how it ends. Okay, we'll see you next time. Thanks for sticking around. Leave a comment and let me know how you would feel about finding out you had a surprise baby.